How cool was that? You liked it, didn't you? Uh, hello friend, my name is Alex Petrescu and I welcome you today to my finance and accounting education channel here on YouTube. Uh, today we are going to talk about uh, going from debt to wealth. Uh, we spoke already, so I launched this mini-series with uh, the purpose of presenting you the basics of uh, personal finance. And we started with uh, building a budget, so a personal budget in Excel and with the help of your bank account, hopefully. Otherwise, uh, so with the, without a bank statement, it's more difficult. You can still do it, even if you are working all cash-based, 100% or something like that. Then we went from uh, building this budget, which hopefully should help you uh, understand your um, uh, monthly uh, expenses. Uh, probably you are, it's easier for you to understand your monthly income. You don't have that many sources. It's a good idea to diversify, but the problem are your expenses and you need to understand them in order to have a better uh, grasp on them and hopefully to reduce them uh, together or in the same time you should increase somehow your income if you can, maybe on a longer term and that will help you get rid of debt, go from a budgetary monthly deficit which is leading you to debt, going from that to a surplus. So. Um, having the money to, to save and to invest and to grow your wealth. Um, of course, I'm saying today that we are going to talk about uh, going from death to wealth. So it's like the third episode in this uh, series. And without breaking the law, you will see in a second what I mean. Uh, I just realized after I did the, the previous video of how to get rid of debt that I um, left one method outside. Of course, I don't recommend it, but just for the fancies and yeah, just for laughing, uh, let me introduce to you Mr. Florin Kutsu, the Prime Minister of Romania, acting Prime Minister of Romania, so not former. Um, he found, uh, let's say, uh, an interesting way of getting rid of debt. Uh, basically, it says here after uh, he admitted that he spent two days in jail and paid some uh, $1,000 as fine for drinking and driving in the United States in 2002. Uh, there is another scandal that involves him, or was another scandal that involved him in two, around 2008 or 2009, I don't remember exactly, so six years later, um, eight years later, excuse me, um, he forgot to, to pay the, his credit card debt, so he had uh, an outstanding on his credit card debt, he left the United States, uh, he was just a young guy back then already uh, 35 36 years old uh, it's one of the mistakes that the teenagers do at 35 36 years old and yeah in the end they dropped the case because uh, okay they couldn't they, they hired a private detective they couldn't find him in the states he was in romania he was already very well paid working for banks he worked for uh, new zealand uh, national bank and he was working for banks for banks also in romania uh, however, I, I'm quite sure you haven't thought about this method of getting rid of your debt. Just run away from the country. Um, of course, that was a joke. Uh, but still, I would like to congratulate my fellow Romanians for um, having such a good taste and choosing such individuals to lead them. <laughs> Going forward, let's just say that saving is the only way systemic way, willingly, uh, through which you can gain wealth. Uh, we said already, this is coming from the, from the past presentation, uh, that on a monthly basis, okay, it can be extended to yearly and so on and so forth. Uh, from your income, you have the expenses, so basically what you're using for your day-to-day -day life, rent, uh, food, clothing, utilities, transportation, entertainment, whatever you are buying with your money and if the sum of these expenses is higher than the income you will get into a deficit which will lead to debt which you don't want we said if the expenses are however lower than your income you will have a surplus um, the surplus can be of course used for for savings and investment and to build your wealth in time the idea is no matter how you do it either by increasing your income or you can do both of the of them in the same time increasing the income is diversifying and making more money it's quite hard on the, and at least on short term 
or because that's the result also of what you have in the past, what kind of experience you have, what kind of education you have, you just cannot just flip it and say like, I want to make double from tomorrow and that will just happen. Um, the other way is to decrease your, of course, to decrease your, your uh, monthly expenses, which is easier on short term. So now that you have built that uh, personal budget in Excel and you know what kind of expenses you have, you can see what you don't need from those. You can search for, uh, for alternative suppliers, for alternative products, anything which can get you in the direction of um, not wasting money anymore. And in other words, you need to consume less than you produce. If you consume less than you produce, then you can save some money, invest and grow your wealth. Um, I'm seeing here that also positive things can happen which are unexpected, like winning the lottery or getting a large inheritance for, from some rich uh, grandmother or aunt or something like that. Uh, but these do not qualify as a, you know, systemic and willing uh, individual choices uh, in order to grow your, your wealth. Uh, the only qualifying part is with this, with, with increasing your savings. Um, then I'm telling you something which is very, very important. And uh, even though in the past years, now let's say that the inflation is rising and it's expected to rise, um, even though the inflation was not that high, Cash is your enemy. Um, the worst thing which you can do once you've seen that you have saved some money in one month and you have a lump amount of money is to keep it in your current account or as cash or even as a bank deposit, but we will talk about that later. No matter the currency. Um, the inflation is a given in, uh, for longer periods. Why? Because um, let's say that a small inflation comes together or brings after it or the uh, growth of the GDP is also uh, bringing a, a small inflation. The idea is quite simple. If you have a little bit of inflation, that means that the aggregated uh, demand is a little bit higher than the aggregated offer, which leaves space for the offer to increase. Hence, you will have this economic growth. And everybody, so all the countries in the world want to have economic growth. So somehow living with a tiny inflation is a given for many countries. Um, whether you hold this money in your, in your house as cash in some drawer, in your safe, in your personal safe, wh whatever you do with it exactly. And you have a risk, it, you risk it being destroyed. Uh, yeah, houses burn from time to time, it can happen, explosions and things like this. You risk having it uh, stolen if people find out that you have so much money in your home. And you also are listing for inflation, even in the banks, maybe in the, when you have it in the bank, you no longer risk the, the, the destruction or the theft or things like this, but you still, uh, even if you have it in, the, in a value box or in a, in a current account or in a deposit, uh, inflation is eating through your money no matter what you do. So uh, it kind of defeats the purpose of building your wealth if you cannot take care of that this simple thing covering the inflation or covering for the inflation. Uh, even if you choose a bank deposit, uh, you need to make sure that the, um, what you are getting from that bank uh, and as an interest rate for your deposit, uh, after deducting all the commissions and fees, whatever they, they charge you for having an account there, needs to be a little bit more at least of equal or even more uh, than the inflation rate in order to maintain your, your, the value of your money or even to increase it a little bit. Um, and uh, another thing which I have seen with many people, they want to have access to their money all the time, large amounts. They, they need to feel this connection and that whatever they want and when they need money, they can access it and use it and spend it. Um, First of all, that's a problem because that might lead to this uh, compulsive buying, which I have said already, and you don't really need that much money and you don't need access to that much money on a very short term. And let's say that most of uh, opportunities which you have nowadays for, for investing your wealth uh, are liquid enough. So except the maybe I'm saying that the real estate, so if you are buying a house or an apartment, 
or you have this very long term plans uh, from which you cannot withdraw or you cannot withdraw without large penalties like um, pension plans, like uh, insurances. Uh, otherwise, all of them are uh, quite liquid, um, let's say, uh, options and you can put your money there and even if you think you don't have access, like if, for example, if you are buying shares, maybe you cannot get your money in five minutes, but you can sell your shares and by tomorrow you will have the money uh, if you need it. Uh, then another recommendation uh, on my side for you is to stay informed. Uh, while staying informed means also doing a lot of reading, following some, some TV uh, shows, um, so read some newspapers online, offline, the way you do it. It's, it's of your choice subscribing to a, to a YouTuber uh, finance, financial education uh, channel uh, such as myself. Um, and you also need to maintain your critical thinking. So don't take uh, at face value whatever you hear or see and think if that's uh, well intended, if it's a rational behind and so on and so forth. Uh, you need to know what's going on in the world because that has an impact also in your country and you need to know what's going on in your country from economic but also I would say political and social points of view because they are somehow interrelated and I'm giving you a, a simple example is that it actually happened to me it's a personal experience uh, a friend of mine uh, not very young actually with technical background so not with an economical or financial background uh, asked me just the other day uh, if I can explain what inflation is with, with simple words because uh, he, she was hearing this this concept and she didn't know what that is so you can imagine she waited till she was she's around 40 so my age and she waited till now to find out what inflation is and the idea is if you don't know what inflation is or how high it is or right now or in the short future at least how can you tell if uh, the deposit of a bank the, the interest rate that the bank is offering you for for, for a deposit it's okay and it's covering you for inflation so you have absolutely no idea you don't even know that inflation exists or what is it exactly um, you also you need to educate yourself on an, uh, alternative investment opportunities we will talk extensively there is already a video i'm going to post it right now um, here on uh, here and um, most of the investments are coming with, with uh, let's say, a um, mix of risk and reward. Usually the higher the risk, also the higher the reward, the lower the risk, the lower the reward. And also you need to take into consideration this liquidity, so how fast you can turn that investment into cash in case you need it. Because I've seen that it's important for, for many people. Um, then uh, I'm giving you my story, my honest story. I started when I was like in high school, so quite quite young, 16, 15, 16 years old. Uh, and I didn't start it with uh, what anyone would expect, with a bank or with a deposit or something simple. I started directly with investment funds, uh, which were not listed. And I put there um, the money that I got from, from scholarships. So you can imagine it was not that much money from scholarships for, for um, uh, ch children's allowance. So the children are were getting, and they are still getting some, some allowance whatever I could get from my family, from my, my grandma and things like this. Um, I was in high school and I didn't even know that I can get a, a bank account or a deposit in a, in a bank. Uh, and I certainly didn't do it. Uh, unfortunately, it was also my first bad experience because I invested in, a, in a, such an investment fund, which was not listed and I still preferred them, but from some other reasons, which and this investment fund was working like a Ponzi scheme, actually. Uh, it worked for many, many years. It was outspoken, so the, they were advertising it all over the place. They got into association with the uh, common state bank from, from my native country. So, and the association was, let's say, public. Uh, the equivalent of the Security Exchange Commission, which is the National Commission of um, uh, Mobile Values, or yeah, so not for, not for real estate. In, in Romania, uh, they didn't do their job at all. And at some point it crashed. Uh, I didn't lose that much money because I was 
putting some money in, taking some money out, buying some things, putting some money in and so on and so forth. So that was, let's say, my, my first uh, bad um, experience. Um, I'm still, I'm saying that I'm still a fan of non, non listed uh, mutual funds. The reason is quite simple with the listed ones, they are having their assets and no matter how good the fund managers are and how good they are investing and what kind of growth they have in their asset portfolio, these funds, if they are listed, they are also on the stock exchange and their price will value based on the uh, demand and offer for those uh, exchange traded funds or these ETFs uh, based on the opinion that people have about those titles. So it can be that they are very well at investing, but nobody wants to buy their uh, their titles on the on the stock market, and the prices can. I have also a few experiences when the prices were for sure not growing. I was not getting any dividends. The non-listed ones have another policy. It's very simple. They look in their portfolio, and usually each and every week, they are calculating how much money they have. They know how many units are circulating out there from that they issued and they say okay this is the price of uh, of a unit for this week and at this price you can withdraw your money from our investment fund or you can buy in some more so you somehow have a direct link between the let's say the their performance as investment fund and the price at which you are buying or selling your participation in that investment fund um, then i went a little bit into the banks and banks deposit of course i didn't like it that much it's uh, the, the, the interest for, for bank deposits are very low, no matter what you do. Um, then I started, okay, once I was already out of university, I was thinking about uh, having a family, the protection that I need, and I, start, I went into the direction of life insurance, also unit linked uh, insurance and things like this. Uh, later I went into shares, I took some opportunity as an employee, um, and then I tried to, to uh, diversify a little bit. Then I went a little a step backwards because this was also for me uh, new and the daily fluctuations were a little bit too much for my heart and I couldn't take my eyes off of this, this evolutions in the, on the stock market and so on. And I uh, pulled myself a little bit uh, uh, backwards uh, towards ETFs and bonds and things like this. I didn't like their performance, I sold them. Um, then I got into private pensions as well, so insurances I already had. Uh, I got into private pension, uh, so saving for a private pension. Uh, that, then I'm, and right now this is what I'm doing, I'm diversifying my, my share uh, shares portfolio. Um, and I'm saying that I'm not really planning to go into real estate. Uh, I'm not saying definitely no, but uh, in terms of buying a house or an apartment, I think for me it's quite late. I will explain later why. Uh, I'm not excluding the real estate investment trust, so the rates, uh, because there you also don't need to, to invest uh, very large amounts of money, like in if you are buying an entire house or an entire apartment. Uh, I'm telling you that you should also start your journeys never too late, even if you are like my friend that didn't knew uh, what inflation is, if, if you are 40, uh, you should start your journey and to, you should start building your wealth. Of course, it would have been better if you would have done it uh, sooner um, because of the compound interest effects. And I think everybody knows the, the earlier you enter in the system, the earlier you start saving for your pension, the more money or you will save faster. It depends uh, what are your goals. Um, and of course you'll grow more wealth and faster this is the idea um we are being what what i'm seeing that is that from young age and we have these models around us and we see that people are working they have their own businesses and so on and so forth we are being thought that we need a source of income to survive yeah you cannot if you if you don't do anything to earn some money somehow you cannot live uh, but we are not being thought what to do uh, with our savings uh, or even that we should have savings and how we should build our wealth and so on and so forth. Um, this is what I'm saying that if you are no longer in your 20s, so till maximum 30s, 30 years old, and it's my case already, if I have lost that trade, uh, I don't regret it uh, because there are alternatives, of course. 
Uh, I would avoid going into the real estate. Uh, I'm posting right, right now also the video for uh, evaluating the real estate. Uh, so when, when you want to, to acquire real estate and how you should think uh, and what kind of factors you should take into consideration when buying yourself a, a house or an apartment. And in this, per this model, I have built it so that if you acquire a house between when you are like 20, 25 years old, and you are paying for the mortgage for 30 years uh, that means you will be done with the mortgage when you are around 50 55 and you live more or less uh, 75 80 years old there can be exceptions okay accidents happen but you can also live uh, longer than that you will have this period at the end of towards your the end of your life usually when you are also in pension and you are not making that much money anymore when you will spare the because you have already paid your mortgage and uh, you no longer need to pay rent because you already have your house or so your apartment or your house and you will spare this these expenses and this will be the benefit for you however if you are entering the system like i am now at 40 that means that i should pay for my house or apartment till i'm 70 and uh, if I'm not very lucky, I will die without having any benefit and somebody will take the apartment, probably some relative, the state, I don't know. It doesn't really matter, but for me it will no longer be beneficial and I won't be able to judge this as an investment since I won't see any positive cash flows from doing this in the future. Um, also what I'm saying, and because you might uh, ask yourself oh, okay i hope that if you are here you already know why you want to to grow some wealth and to uh, to to save some money and to invest in things like this but if you are not entirely sure and you don't know how this can help you i'm telling you that it's this is offering you a substantial uh, psych uh, uh, psychical comfort so you will feel safer more relaxed if you know that you have some money on a side uh, of course, the more you have, the better you will feel. Um, I'm not talking about lifestyle that you can maybe uh, live a better life and things like this. Um, but it's also allowing you to try different careers and opportunities in life and you know, traveling, maybe moving to some other country, to some other uh, city. Uh, and what is very important, uh, workforce market, uh, there are... and. You can see it with every crisis. There are a lot of uh, jackals out there uh, that are trying to profit from your experience, your knowledge, uh, the fact that you are uh, actually being paid and you are selling your time. And they will try to profit, especially if you are desperate and you don't have any money set aside and you uh, desperately need um, money to live uh, very, very fast. And they are trying to profit from you. And once you have this wealth, you are somehow covered and you can laugh in their faces and say, no, that salary is not enough. I mean, for that salary, maybe you can hire yourself some part time. I'm not going to sell my services for that salary. Uh, and also it's, it's helping you in, in periods of distress. I mean, I said that it's already offering you uh, psychical comfort. So you, you can no, you should no longer think or not that much about troubles. But when you do get in trouble, if you get ill or sick, uh, if you're unemployed, uh, in, in economic downturns, bankruptcy, um, let's say your company is going bankrupt, the company you are working for is going bankrupt, uh, you get fired, whatever happens, uh, this is helping you uh, in those moments. Uh, this was it for today about, um, uh, let's say, going from debt to wealth. This was the topic for today. Uh, I look forward with the next presentation in this short series about uh, personal finance. Once again, my name is Alex Petrescu and thank you very much for your attention.